At Hukulau City Council meeting Monday, July 21st, 2014, 7 p.m. We'll now come to order. Call to order, please. Mayor roll call. Clark. That's what I meant, roll call is what I meant. Roll call? Okay. Yes, sir. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Uh, Swatting Lance and here. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds? Here. <laughs> Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybach? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, welcome everyone first off. Thank you so much for being here. If you have a cell phone, if you put it on, uh, either turn it off or put it on, uh, what's that word I'm after? Vibrate. Vibrate. Silence. Shake. Vibrate. Vibrate. Meeting mood. Meeting mood. That's Meeting exactly mood. Right. All right, the invocation tonight will be by Councilman John Craybarker. He stands for Lord, I pray for all the community officials, and especially the leaders of our, of our own country. I pray for the mayor that he may conduct the affairs of the local government with, with wisdom and true justice. I pray for the members of council that they may truly represent the needs of the people and work in harmony for the, advance, for the advancement of all men, women, and children. I pray for the administration, that they may work with mercy and civil law with divine mandate. I grant all of our national, state, and local leaders the gifts of wisdom, justice, counsel, and fortitude, that they may conduct the affairs of man in accordance with the will of God. Grant to all men the gift of respect for lawful authority, justly exercised, that we may live as a united people, one nation under God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. If we'll use the flag in the back, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have action on the minutes of regular meeting July 7th, 2014. So moved. Thank you. I have a question. Is that second for you, Mr. Craylow? It was uh, Mr. Zambach. Okay. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Go ahead, Jones. Um, it says Mrs. Jones shared that the income tax committee met last week. Is that going to be the name of the committee, income tax committee? Or is there? We haven't there? got a motto or a slogan yet. We're hoping to do that at the next meeting. Something that will really get our feelings robust. I like that. Part. Gosh, we really need it. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I'm just wondering if that was. When we do official name this way. It doesn't have an official name yet. We're just referring to it as the Income Tax Committee because I was calling it the Levy Committee and I don't think it's really a levy. So I have a question on that also if you would. Is, is would it be possible to have that on any day but Wednesday and that they set up their next meeting? Sure. I would like to come but Wednesdays are not a good day for me that's no that's we need input as to when people can make it, so. It would be good if we can get as many people to the one after that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Anyone else in the minutes? Mr. Collier? Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybock? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Minutes of 7-7, seven, seven, past 7 to 0. Thank you. Communications, are there any from the city this evening? No, not tonight. We do have one from Mr. McIntyre, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, members of the public. This is my favorite time of year because it's the time of the Clark County Fair. What I love about the Clark County Fair is all the 4-H kids will bring their, their livestock or their projects to the fair and they get judged. And they can win first place, they get a ribbon, they're the grand champion of Clark County. And here in New Carlisle, we have two people who I think are deserving of first place grand champion and should get a ribbon and some recognition. 
So I've got two ribbons here to hand out for some people who've gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty to make this a great place to live. And the first one I would like to give out is to Sergeant Ralph Underwood. And the reason I want to give it to him is because the Sheriff's Department has done an excellent job in fighting, fighting drugs, drug trafficking, and drug abuse in our town. We all know about the recent um, bust of two heroin dealers, but not just that, it's, it's been um, a very, very long and direct process of fighting drugs here. So I'll be coming over in a minute to, to give you your price here for helping fight drugs and drug abuse in our community. And the second ribbon, yeah. and the second ribbon for first place goes to Mr. Randall Bridge uh, for putting together and launching the first ever community garage sale in New Carlisle, which brought people from um, as far away as Cincinnati up here to buy things. And not only did they come in and buy treasures from people's homes, but they also stopped it at the restaurants, at the gas station, at the local stores on Main Street. And it's, it's an economic impact that you really just can't measure because it's so immense. And it's something that's just gonna grow from here. And it's a great institution that I think is really gonna grow and, and put us on the map as, as a great place in the Miami Valley. So our two first place grand champions, and we'll give them the ribbon. They could actually put those on their forehead, both of them. We could get a picture. Can I, can I wear it? Well, that was cool. Well, they could. That's in you, folks. There we go. Thanks. Good job, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. We appreciate it. Mayor, would you, would you remind them that just because they have a ribbon, they don't have to go to slaughter at the end of the week? Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. We appreciate that. All right, we'll go ahead now at the city manager's report, if you will, please. Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to say we're all very jealous about the blue ribbons. <laughs> we'll start the re uh, report with the finance discussion, and I'll turn that over to our finance director, uh, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Ms. Jones, Mayor, Council, and the members of the public here tonight. My uh, June Council report, I'll um, do the summary here on the front page. For June, our total revenue that we took in was $278,658.70. June expenses were $493, $290. Sorry about that. $493,000. $290.66. They're blurring today. I've been on the computer too long. But out of that number, we did pay a very large debt for the um, OWDA, which was $200,000. So we're still pretty much right on track. Our year-to-date revenue is um, what we've collected year-to-date so far is $2,362,255.12. And our total year-to-date expenditures is $2,307,000. $320.03. So we're about halfway through the year and we're right on track with our estimates. The uh, debt payments we still have due before the end of the year is $315,000. Tax receipts for the month of June were $30,057.44. Still a little bit of a decline. Um, that's kind of common for what the tax administrator was telling us with some business net losses so far and not sure if they'll pick up or not. Year to date, total income tax receipts is $555,950.54. We're about 1.7% under last year's total. Any questions? Council? Yes, Mr. Reynolds, please. Ms. Lowry, go ahead. Mary, what was the debt yes. for the um, sewer plan? Um, is that for OWDA is multiple, um, usually water and wastewater projects, the Ohio Development Water Authority. They're, they've been in since the mid-90s, some of them. So there's several projects involved in that one payment. Yeah. yeah, there was three, and I'm still getting some history on them, but it's for the ongoing debt for those items. All right, and my question is, uh, how is the pool doing? Is it making any money right now, or is it... Is we're happy to the season and the weather's kind of in. 
bad. Oh, I can get you some better numbers so far. No, it's not and never has from what I've seen. The general fund pretty much subsidizes the pool every year. All right, because I know two and years I don't in a row we've the, made money. Pardon? Two years in a row we've made money, so I know if this year we were losing. Cause I, we in 2012, we we did, we, we not did, last we, year, but 2012 and 11, we made money. Mm -hmm. There's always a transfer that I've seen from the general fund, though, to help subsidize, but I can get you some um, figures for the next meeting if you'd right. like. Thanks so much. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Kramer. Um, <coughs> is the mowing for Twin Creeks, is that uh, contracted out? I see a check in there, that's why I asked. Yes. So that's contracted out? There's no way we can cut that ourselves, or is it too massive? Um, or? Is that it's, it's, it's contracted out. With the being only three people in that department, it takes them away from doing their street repairs and that kind of thing if they're mowing. Although we have sat down and determined we think we make more money if we do it in house because we can, isn't that right, Mr. Bridge, that we decided it that next year we may go back to trying to maybe hire a, another seasonal person to help right. us with the mowing? because of the administrative fees that we get and um, man hour fees. Man hours. Man hour we fees charge more per man hours when we're doing it ourselves than the, if somebody else is doing it, we charge what they charge us. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna look at it again next year. Basically this year, the guys were just too busy to be able to, to do it. All right, um, Could you explain, um, Tom, a little bit, the letter that, that we got from Mike? What he attached in the report was, uh, I'm asking him every month to keep us um, a little bit more updated on the um, tax collection. The, what, what was your, your main concern on the letter? Well, I, I just, could you just explain a little bit, you know, so that for the people out there can Okay, understand. basically he's, he's trying to um, get an update as to why the last, this is the third month in a row that our income tax collection has been a little less than the previous year. Um, he's contacted other cities also to see where their balance is, and it's, it depends a lot on when people put their um, withholdings when they collect, if it falls on a month or a different month. But he basically, what he was looking at was that um, it's a lot of the business income has dropped their net, so they're not paying as much on the taxes. We are putting in and implementing a better collection for the income tax that we do have uh, that's due the city, and we've been working with our law director to establish some stronger verbiage letters and possibly even doing some court um, for the ones who aren't paying, because we're just trying to really do a lot of that in-house ourselves, too. We used to farm it out to a company, but they weren't succeeding very well. So, so you're not going to farm any more out to come? No, we haven't in the Thank last God. couple of months, no. Thank God. <laughs> we actually haven't in a couple of years. They're just, the money that we are getting now or that we're paying now is for the accounts that they've had that they continue to work on, but they yeah. haven't gotten any new accounts in a couple of years. Yeah, it didn't, the numbers just wasn't up. Right. In the, in the first, so. uh, looks like, you know, the un, uh, uncollected balance is 424000 or some change, so, you know. So and we'll be working on that and to, about to, to, to draw, try to filter that all out. We are, we're, um, the auditors are coming in for their final um, audit for the city this week. After that is over, we're going to have them help direct us on what is allowed to be wrote off for accounts for people who have deceased or uncollectible and try to get a closer real number out mm -hmm. of what's on the books. Um, the tax um, administrator also let me know that about half of what's on the books is principal and interest penalties on top. So there's about a 200, 180 to $200,000 that is our target, what we're going after. Okay. Um, what principal and interest we can get, we're going to try to also. But if we can get the core okay. and uh, get it moving, brought in. Just give us really good form that. Okay. That's a lot of money. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Continuing then with our uh, service discussion, Mr. Kipko, did you have any updates today? I just have a couple. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor and Council, uh, members of our few public. Um, one is the bike trail. Uh, we've been performing some bike trail maintenance. I guess uh, last week I was out. Um, today, brush was cleared by the open shelter. 
uh, where the church had done that um, the year before, uh, prior. I guess he got about a 30 foot wide span and we left it late. So hopefully leaving some of the stuff lay will help kill off some of the stuff and slow down the growth. Um, and then the washout that's behind it where they had the heavy rock and we had that severe storm wash some of the gravel out, they're gonna try and get that reset so it looks like it did um, before that storm went through. Uh, we are currently, uh, have completed 75% of our Dura patching. They have gotten a couple streets completed in the Northwoods area, which is our last area. Once we finish that up, we're gonna hit some alleys and a few other spots that have popped up uh, during that time frame. And hopefully get completed. Uh, those guys have been running that Dura patch for almost uh, three months solid now. It's just never ending from that winter. Uh, hydrant flushing started last week. We completed section A, which was the Willowick area. Uh, we are in section B this week, which is the Edgebrook area. And to date, we have not received any complaints. We've been running the flushing schedule, I think, almost a solid uh, four or five years now. So we haven't had the iron issues like we did on the first year that we've lost. Excuse me. Uh, crossing signal anchors were installed this morning. And we will hopefully finish um, installing some poles and some of the hardware on the bike trail uh, signals uh, throughout this week. If not, it'll be followed up next week. And then I also looked at the signs today uh, for our parks. And I visited, obviously, one of our businesses who had a hand in the original Smith Park sign to get some of the emblems replaced, the non-paintable areas. But I think some of that other stuff, we got to get a couple of gallons of the paint, and we'll go ahead and get those uh, fixed in-house, uh, get those painted. Uh, Willowick just we, needs uh, repainted, and the only one I didn't get to yet was Carlisle Park, and see if we need some extra besides just our local guys to help get that corrected and uh, fixed. That is all I have for uh, updates. Council? Yes. Yes, Ron. Thank you. Where are we at with all of the water leaks that were checked and everything? Are those all taken care <coughs> of and the new meters? Uh, the original water leaks were done there shortly after, I think, um, this past fall. We had, as we get them, we fix them, usually within a couple weeks. Okay. As far as the meter project, I do have the $40,000 grant that came in. Um, Ms. Harris told me that that got deposited this last week. And then the loan is already approved, that part. <coughs> The, we have a pre-construction meeting next week. We'll go over on what items we need to order first, what collectors, data collectors, things like that. So we're hoping by December uh, that the project's finished. So there's virtually no leaks now and we're worried where the city is losing money as we were before. Right, right. Um, as soon as I mean, we see... there's always going to be small ones, I'm sure, but I'm, you know... What yeah, I'm we about. actually about a month, about a month and a half ago, we started seeing our water uh, usage go up from about... Uh, 480, 500,000 gallons. It got up close to 600, 650. We called the company in, and within two, three weeks, we had it back down into the high fours again. Okay. So that's how quick we're doing it now, now that we have some equipment, and then get that company to come in and finish it up. That's great. Thank you, Howard. Yes, Mr. Lyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Howard, what, uh, what is our next scheduled street sweeping to be done? Is it before or after October? Do you know? Uh, it, it's going to be before, but it's after I get dirt patching completed. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one other question, if you would. You mentioned signs. The sign that's Addison Carlisle in 235, as you pull out of Howard's, the one that says, welcome to New Carlisle, if you can see it, it would say that. I had talked to, I think it is at Weiss Landscaping that's taking care of the park uh, for us. They had supposedly, we were going to do something with that sign for us. And if you remember, I talked with you on that. Uh, nothing's been done at this point. I haven't had another, another conversation with them. I was wondering, is, is there any way we could get down there and trim those bushes? And also, there's weeds growing up into the sign itself. Maybe just clean it up until hopefully they can do something with it before us one of these days to redo it. <clears throat> it is still representing the city of New Carlisle, and you see it all the time pulling in and out of the grocery store and so forth. Yep. And that is our property, I understand. Yep. We checked on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Continuing then with the planning and zoning, our planning director, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, City Manager Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the June activity for the planning department. What 11, 11 complaints come through the office, brings our year to date total up to 34. I issued 14 yellow tags slash verbal warnings, brings our year to date total up to 86. 
I issued five, violation, uh, five nuisance violations, brings her year-to-date total up to 17. Issued 30 grass violations, brings her year-to-date total to 81. We had nine property abatements for the month, brings our year-to-date total to 13. And I processed th uh, 12 zoning permit applications, which brings our year-to-date total to 42. For our compliance rates, our yellow tags to violation is sitting at 64%. Our year-to-date total on that is 80%. Our nuisance violations to abatement still sit at 100%, meaning that none of those uh, nuisance violations actually go into abatements. Uh, and it's the same for the year-to-date total on that as well. Uh, flat grass violations to abatements were at 70%. Our brings our year-to-date total at 84%. Some current work that I'm working on, uh, community yard sale. Uh, thank you, Mr. McIntyre, for the recognition. That was very uh, thoughtful of you. We had a very high interest in that this year. We had over 75 addresses. Uh, there's probably more with people who did not register but still did go ahead and have a garage sale. Uh, ran ads in the new Carlisle News and also the Springfield News Sun. I sent press releases to Channel 7, Channel 2, K99 FM, and then also Troy Daily News. Uh, got a lot of positive feedback regarding that event. A lot of people from out of town coming up, as Mr. McIntyre had already stated. Uh, the most important thing that came out of it for me was people who would other, other, not otherwise come to our town have come, and they are very impressed with it. So hopefully we get to go on that momentum and they come back in the coming weeks to, to further shop in town. Community walk day is scheduled for September 2nd, 2014. Uh, I put a map of the path in with the council packets. It will start at Smith Park. We can go to the uh, northwest or, or to the southeast there. We also uh, have to say that it can be canceled for lack of participation. I will try to run an ad in New Carlisle News and that is budget permitting. New Carlisle is open for business. Uh, this month I would like to uh, feature uh, Michael and Susan Smith's property. Uh, they have the parcel number 0300. 5,30302001. It does not have an address associated with it, but it is the last parcel on the city limits. It's actually on the east side. I know it says west side on your packet. Most of them looking at the picture upside down, do I do apologize about that. But it is the last parcel on the city limits on the east side of State Route 235. It has 2.56 legal acres. It is currently zoned light industrial. Permitted uses in light industrial are industrial and manufacturing uses research and development establishments, warehouse and wholesale establishments, building material sales and storage yards. Additional uses for that parcel, they do require planning board and council approval. It would be junkyard, salvage yards, or automobile wrecking yards. We also can do resource and mineral, mineral extraction. You also have retail establishments. If you have any more questions regarding that parcel, just give me a call at 845-9492. Farmer's Market is actually a huge success this year. Lots of fresh produce and other unique items. It does run Saturday mornings from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in our downtown area. Planning Board did meet on June 19, 2014. They approved a lot split for Chrysler Dodge Jeep. And also the Board of Zoning Appeals met on the same day, uh, June 19, 2014. They approved a mural that's going to be painted on the side of the waterbed store. Council that is in your council packet as well. Some changes that they're going to do to this picture is there'll be, um, the, sh the picture is actually going to be shifted to the left to get out of the crosswalk area signal here, so you can uh, picture that. And also the, the Board of Zoning Appeals has mandated they put, uh, established in, um, I'm sorry, what year were we established? 1810. 1810, I do apologize about that. But that will be established 1810 on the bottom of that mural as well. Vacant housing number is 72 for the month and that puts us around our, our monthly average on that as well. That's all I have. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council. Mr. Graybrocker first. We'll go to okay. um, For the open for business, are you advertising that anyplace else besides no. our packet? No, just, just in the council packet so people can see it on YouTube. Okay. Um, also, in the farmer's market, yeah, my, you saw my wife and I, you know. Yeah. We partake a whole lot in that farmer's market. Good. And, and we bring our bikes down there. But what we're having is, is a hard time finding a place to roll our bikes without getting into the street, without worrying about the traffic. Is there a way to put like a barrier a few feet you know, from, from the curb because you know, give us a little extra room there? Is it, you know, I know that's supposed to be for parking. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, you know, that's kind of, you saw us you know, with our bikes the other day, you know, we got knocked off there trying to get around. 
It is, and you're not the only one voicing that same same concern. It is a, a very valid complaint. We are very aware of the situation. Um, it is something that I did talk to our city manager Jones regarding uh, last weekend um, to put some barricades down, not so much on the Penny Lane side, but on the opposing side. Um, so uh, it is something that we can definitely look at. I think the more that the market does get busier, that we are going to have to take some action regarding that. It's, it's, it's public safety is what it is. Um, but it does give, it, you know, blocking off, even if, if it is just where they park, but not disrupt the flow of traffic. You know, we're looking at five or six feet that people have, you know, free in, uh, uh, in and out yeah, without having to worry about it. Yeah, just, sure. a few, just a few feet. Uh, mm -hmm. And one other question is, um, I asked some time ago about numbers on, on the houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were going to look into trying to, because I guess there is a law that's supposed to have a number in the house, and also it's in a the house Person. numbers on the addresses yes. it is uh it's it's a slow process but I, usually if i violate somebody i'll, I'll take a look at their um ha ad addresses on their house if they are compliant then i you know obviously let it go if it is something that needs to be addressed i usually address it right there with that violation um it is it, it, i'm looking for winter projects you know that's going to take going from house to every house you know we're looking at quite a bit of rooftops to check um, but it is a concern. Um, I've talked to Chief Phillips about it as well. So we do have a little a little plan in place. Um, but to be honest, we haven't full forced it yet. Yeah, I was thinking maybe the fire department could even help you. you know, sure. Cadets or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, um, how's the sidewalk project? Sidewalk project, we started in Northwoods. Uh, I, I don't know the exact number. I want to say that we do have more than 10 permits to have come through the office. Sure. Um, which is a little bit better than what I thought we we're going to get since we won't be assessing uh, any body and do the work ourselves. Uh, we still have some more time left. Um, we know right now the deal is September is when we stop waiving the fee. However, I have discussed it with city manager Jones that if we do have to go a little bit past September to help people, you know, waive that fee, you know, I think that we can go ahead and do that for them. Okay. Thank you. Good. Mr. Bruce, I just had a quick question on the on the mural for the sure. circle. Where's the funding for that coming from? Uh, right now, they are reaching out to Coke to have that paid for. Okay. Um, I spoke with Mr. McWhorter actually at the farmers market. Uh, they finally got a hold of the correct people at Coke, so now he's waiting on a response from them. You guys have an idea of just what the rough cost might be? You know, off the top of my head, I, I don't have the exact I, mm, ballpark figure. I want to say it was at least 150. Thank you very much. Sure. Is that one hundred and fifty thousand? No, one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's based off the square footage of the sign. So that's that square footage of the sign. It's a huge I sign. I know. I, I would we've, think we've gotten estimates from Mike Smith in the past on trying to do billboard type stuff. Mm -hmm. He really wanted to put some other type of board on the building itself and then utilize that. And he's done quite a few of them. I mean, something that size would be twenty five hundred, three thousand at least. Maybe more. The city is not paying anything no, towards that. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure people know that we're not. Yeah, no, hopefully Coca Cola can put some money up. That would be great. That, that'll be a nice attribute for the city. It, it absolutely. Sorry to interrupt over this side anyway. So. Thank you so much for all you do. You're doing a great job. Please keep it up. Thank you. Continuing then with our fire discussion, Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, citizens, and guests. For the month of June 2014, the New Crawl Fire Division responded to 87 calls for service. Fire responses totaled 15 with an average response time of 5 minutes 52 seconds. The division responded to 72 emergency medical calls for service with an average response time of 4 minutes 53 seconds. Elizabeth Township statistics are as follows. Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 12 calls for service during the month of June. Uh, they had an even split six fire responses and six emergency medical responses. Uh, there were 10 responses into Elizabeth Township and two responses into the village of Castown. Uh, as far as significant events go, it was a pretty uh, light month. Uh, on 623, we did have a fully involved uh, garage fire. In the village of Castown, the Elizabeth Township crews responded with Castown Fire and quickly brought that fire under control. Um, we did see an uptick in June, uh, which we usually do, May, June, of some illegal burning. Uh, and please remember that burning brush trash, trash, or other materials is prohibited in the city of New Carlisle. Uh, recreational fires are permitted with a fire pit or burn chamber that is no larger than three feet in diameter. Uh, burn times are strictly regulated by the fire chief. And burning will not be permitted during times of high winds, periods of uh, uh, little or no rainfall, or any other 
time deemed unacceptable by myself. Uh, a lot of it has to do with weather, usually the wind. But uh, if we're in the middle of a drought, obviously we're not going to permit any kind of burning at all. But uh, the, the biggest problem we've seen is, is a lot of trash burning. People trying to get rid of uh, either garage trash or yard waste or things like that. And, uh, we get a lot of neighborhood complaints. Uh, with that, I have nothing else. And I'll entertain any questions. Over here. Hey, on this side. Uh, I have one question for you, same one I ask you all the time. Equipment-wise, are we doing fine? Doing fine. Everything's up and right. Everything's up and right. Yep. Thank you again for all you do. Appreciate it. Continuing then with the police discussion, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Council, citizens, mayor. In June, reports by Mr. Rob Deputy were 18. Reports by County Deputy were 30. We had none. Traffic information, traffic stops, we had 60. Citations issued out of that was 43. OVI arrest, we had three with three charges. Driving under suspension, there were 12. Parking citations, 13. Uh, no abandoned uh, vehicles, and we had two non injury accidents and no injury accidents. Under arrest information, we had uh, criminal adult arrest, we had four. Criminal adult charges, there were four. Uh, a lot of times we get, when we make an arrest, we'll have two or three charges, but this time it, each one was charged with one that violation of each. Uh, juveniles, we arrested none, so we had no charges, and we had four warrant arrests. We had no assaults for the month of June, break and entering, we had one. Thefts, we had four. Vandalism, none. 911 hangups, we had seven. Phone harassments, there was none. Domestic violence with an assault, there was none. Uh, domestic was verbal, we had three. Lockouts, one. Peace officer calls, we had none. Alarms, we had six. And assists, there were 91. And in July, Deputy Todd Leisure was put on a 45-day assignment in the city of New Carlisle. He is replacing Deputy Joe Weiss, who is off on medical leave. In the week of July 28th, Deputy John Loney will be placed on a 45-day assignment in New Carlisle, replacing Tim Leedy, who will also be off on medical leave. And then we have Deputy Brian Beller. He's on his way home now from Arizona. Uh, Deputy Brian Beller uh, was attending a drug evaluation and classification, DEC program, that has received national acclaim for its success in identifying drug-impaired driver. Officers trained as a recognition expert, or DREs, are frequently called upon to different drug um, influence and uh, medical or medical disorders, and their training is an extremely valuable tool in combating the adverse impact of drug and alcohol impaired driving in our communities. And we look forward to having Deputy Beller as a DRE expert. And I just found out today that uh, on his way back, he passed his exam, and he now is a DRE expert, which is um, a very difficult class. The, the ratio to pass, you must get 100%, not on just his testing, but the whole week that he's in Arizona. Prior to that, he spent a week uh, in Ohio uh, preparing for this and, and taking classes. And the unique thing about all this is it came out of his own pocket. He paid $1,000 for the course as um, driving fare to and back. And the good thing is he will be reimbursed 100% since he did pass the course. So uh, we're looking forward to having him. Now, what this really means is now people that are taking prescription medication that we can't uh, differ between whether they're uh, on some kind of uh, alcohol or hallucinogen or even smoking dope uh, or taking pills. He will be able to, to, to distinguish the difference between that. Um, and it is, there's only several of those officers. I think he's the ninth in the state of Ohio right now. So he's, he's done a great job with that. With that, that's my report and I'll entertain any questions. Council. Council, this side. Council. 
Sergeant has such a great report. No one has any questions. Oh, I'm sorry. We have one. Here we go. <laughs> Don't give him a second chance. <laughs> I have to give him a second chance. Okay. Yeah, I'm enjoying the report so much. You know, I thought you were asleep there for a minute. Um, yeah, I kind of fell asleep maybe. Uh, I really enjoyed the article that Bader did in the newspaper. You know, uh, I read it word for word, and you know, and I think those kind of articles we really do need, you know, out there, you know, for information purposes, especially with the drug problem that we have you know, in the community. You know, um, you know, I'm having people come up to me says, you know, I see people going in and out of this house, so you know, and I pass on that information. You know, I, I have, I, I just email the sheriff. You know, so magic line or anything so well deputy fader worked up here for many years he knows all the ins and outs and yep. the places they go and hide and, and whatever yep. so he's a big asset to uh, the investigation division also yeah you by you and i have talked about the drug problem you know many times you know and i just wish that there was more that we can do and the best thing we can do is know your neighbors you know and he states that in, in, in the article you know and i've gotten to know my neighbors you know, over the years, you know, got to know their routines, you know, and, and so, but I, a bunch of retirees around where I live, so, you know, it's kind of like, they're not doing anything, maybe they are, and I don't know. Well, I'll pass the word on to Deputy Fader, thank you. Yeah, that was a really good article. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Continuing then under informational, and your packets was a flyer regarding the 7th Annual Kenton Caper Bike Tour that is set for Saturday, September 6th at 9 a.m. And you have your choice of 8, 22, and 36 miles for that tour. And that is to aid or to support the developmental disabilities of Clark County. I encourage all of our bike riders to participate in that. Next in your uh, packets was a memo regarding the employee Christmas lunch. I know, Christmas in July, but it gets here fast and we have to make our plans. So um, we are requesting that we do, like we have done in the past, close at noon on the Friday before Christmas this year. That would be December the 19th. And then the employees um, would meet here for a carry-in lunch. Um, and that would need a motion of council to approve us to close early. Council. Yes. So moved. December 19th for Christmas dinner. Do we, as I say, a time on here? Um, we'll we'll be closing at noon. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on that? Oh, you would call for the vote, please. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lauer. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lauer. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Absolutely. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zandlock. Yes. Thank you very much. Also in your packet is the monthly Clark County Combined Health District report. Next, I would like to discuss the Dayton Access Television. I'd like to thank Mr. Craybacher for bringing this to me, to, uh, information to me regarding the possibility of having our council meetings once again on television instead of just on the YouTube for people who maybe don't have computers or are not comfortable watching it. Um, so we have entered a, an agreement with the Dayton Access Television and we have decided to go at the nonprofit level uh, $250 a year for them to show our council meetings and the schedule it will be on channel 23 and hopefully starting this week so that will be starting tomorrow they will be on Tuesdays either at five, uh, from 5 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then that same Friday they would be on again from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. the first and the third first and third Tuesday first and third Friday following our council meetings the same week. If anybody has questions, they can give me a call and I'll repeat that information for you. But that hopefully will start tomorrow afternoon at 5, channel 23. You should be able to see our council meetings televised again. So you just said Tuesdays and Fridays. They'll Tuesdays Friday. and Fridays. So they'll do a Tuesday and Friday. Right. Okay. Two days a week. Um, 
There, in your packet is a press release that came from the New Clark Community Health Center. They will be having a grand reopening. They are trying to get the word out that they are there and the services that they provide to the community, both the English and the Spanish speaking communities. Um, the open house is scheduled for Wednesday, August the 13th, noon until 4.30. I encourage you all to go in. If you've never been in that building, you wouldn't believe how beautiful it is inside. It used to be a car dealership and they worked on cars in there and you would never know it now. There's a doctor in there. They have uh, medical, dental, behavioral health, clinical, and dispensing pharmacy all on site. And it is uh, based, you pay on based on your income. So it's a sliding scale. They accept insurances, Medicaid. Um, so I do encourage everybody to uh, stop by and, and see the, the center and to use them. Um, it's a great asset to the city. We're lucky to have it here. In your packet also, I wanted to let you know about a, um, a service that the Lake Avenue Christian Church is going to be providing for our communities. It's called um, Close for Our Community, August the 2nd from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. at the church at 1101 West Lake Avenue. They will be having clothes available for kids and adults. All the clothes are free, so please take advantage. Be getting ready for school and everything. Stop by and see what they've got. They're trying to help fill a need that's in the community, so I do encourage you to participate. <laughs> Lastly, this was not in your packet, I just got this today, but uh, we've been advised that the Spangler Road Bridge rehabilitation will begin on Monday, August the 4th, and continue through October the 17th. They do intend to keep traffic moving, like similar to what they're doing on 235, so there should be one lane open at all times. Um, during that construction. However, Union Road, which if you're familiar with the area, is right there by the bridge, that will be closed during the entire project. So um, just to give you a heads up, I know a lot of people use that to get on off and on 675. August 4th is in another week, so um, beware. And that was all I had. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Council, any questions for city manager? Yes, Mr. Mike. I did have one about the community health center. Um, I, I was at a, a workshop years ago up, up in Cleveland, and there was a lot of larger metropolitan areas there. And I was discussing this health center that we had available and the resources we had, um, both for English and, and the Hispanic community. And a lot of them were really jealous of, of having this available. They didn't have anything like it. The question I had, and maybe I was wrong, but didn't a church donate an, an ultrasound device or machine there that was available, or is that no I longer? I have not heard that. I'm okay. sorry, I don't know. That's what I, 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 you know, I just threw that out there. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, that's what I had heard. I guess I could contact them, but if that were the case, that would be something that's really sure. great. Yeah. Just the fact that they have the pharmacy now, too, because when they first opened up, they didn't have the pharmacy available, but now it's kind of a one-stop one shop. The dentist and the doctor in to pick up your prescriptions, so um, it's great. And they're also, during the event, I should add this, they're going to do uh, some dental screenings, diabetic heel testing, cholesterol, blood pressure screenings, CPR and first aid demonstrations, healthy eating and physical activity de activity demonstrations, and they also have games, raffles, and music. So, entertainment all afternoon. Anyone else for the city manager? Thank you for your report. Thank you so much. Committee reports tonight? Any None committee tonight. reports? Nope. Okay, resolutions. Mr. Yeah. Collier, if you would read resolution, please. Resolution 14-06R, a resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting in. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion to adopt resolution 14-06R. Second. And this is an annual resolution. We have to do a boilerplate at exactly the same every year, but it's required, um, I believe it's required by the ORC. So we'll do the resolution this tonight and then next week we'll follow up with the two ordinances that are also required and this is so that we can uh, assess the citizens in New Carlisle for the um, cost of the street lights. What we do is take the cost of the entire city and then it's divided by, we're given a rate like a, so many cents per uh, footage. If you're on a corner lot, unfortunately you pay a little more because you have more frontage on your property. But that's how it's based. Um, every year we also offer the opportunity, and Mrs. Harris will be putting it in the paper, um, for people to come in and pay their assessments ahead of time. By doing that, you avoid the 4% uh, 
um, fee that the auditor's office charges everybody. And that'll be in, we'll let you know, I think it's like the middle of August is when we'll have that available for people to come in and, and pay in advance. Thank you. Any questions on that, Council? Anyone? Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Graybacher? Yes. Mr. Black Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Resolution 1406R passes 7 to 0. Thank you. If you would, when you're ready, if you would read the rest of the ordinances that we're introducing, please. Yes, Mayor. If you run out of, you don't have water tonight, then do. <laughs> I'll, I'll just yeah. tell you what you're looking for after this keeps off. Uh, okay. off. Okay. Ordinance 14 36, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8 4 14. An ordinance amending the fee for appeals to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Ordinance 14 37, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8 4 14. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 14-38, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8414. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting. Ordinance 14-39, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8414. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 14-40, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8414. An ordinance certifying to the Clark, Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 14-41, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8414. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding concerning health insurance for employees. Thank you, sir. You didn't even run out of Thank you. Other business? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. It's been said already once or twice tonight, and I just wanted to say again thank you to uh, Mr. McIntyre for bringing the community garage sale to light at a previous council meeting back, whether it was earlier this year or later last year, and to Randy for spearheading it and getting it off the ground. It was nice to have a, a positive buzz going throughout the town for the past week or so. A lot of people were excited about it. And, you know, it seems, you know, sometimes throughout the summer, it's hard to find a positive buzz with some of the negativity that, that floats around here and there, but uh, it was, you know, it was, it was a great job by both of you, so thank you very much. If I may add a little to that, uh, I thought it was very successful. I would recommend, though, that if we are doing it again next year, not to have it during fair week, if we could make sure that we don't get the same weekend that the fair starts. A lot of people were involved in that may have been here. Uh, anyone else? Other business? Anything? Yes, Mr. Craybock. Uh, just want to ask you about the Twin Creeks again. Is anything happening with that right now? Are you talking about the lawsuit or the lots? The lots. Uh, again, I've signed another batch of complaints uh, from the prosecutor's office, so there's out of the 30 lots, there's probably only maybe six more that have to be signed, and they will all go through the foreclosure process. Now, I'll remind you that, like any foreclosure, that's a lengthy process. It, get at, it gets advertised in the paper, uh, and then the prosecutor will make a motion, assuming nobody shows up to object, which there's, uh, we certainly don't expect that at all. Uh, and really, the only person who might, who didn't have a chance to object the last time, would be the estate of the developer, and that estate was insolvent anyway, so they don't have any incentive to, uh, to contest the, the foreclosure. They, they, have no, uh, uh, they have no real interest uh, in the property. So, uh, you know, it's gonna be a few weeks, frankly months, but eventually we'll get tied into those, and then um, Ms. Jones will be able to resume the efforts to uh, 
to sell those. As far as we know, the buyer is that we have talked to is still interested in them. Okay. Anything about Madison School? I had another person call asking about the price and um, asking if they could put a church there. So uh, I said, you know, I said council had suggested a dollar, and yes, the church is legal there. So waiting to hear back, we've got three or four people saying they've got stuff in the works. So I'm just happy that people are talking about it. At least that will move us forward. I think that the fact that it's a topic of discussion. Yes, Mr. Long. I believe that people are talking about it. That council may want to have a work session and talk about the restrictions. In other words, if someone buys it, we need to set a time of how long it's going to take to tear it down and we'll refurbish it. You know, in steps or whatever. You know, not that someone can get it and take five years to do it. I, yeah. I think we need to set some guidelines and put them in stone so that if it doesn't happen, it goes back. I would like to see somebody with a plan. I would suggest that once we get an offer that we do meet and do that, um, because we would have to have, of course, we'd have to have an agreement at that point anyways. So council will definitely have input into what should be in that agreement at, by the time if we should get somebody approach us with an offer. Okay. I think it should be put out there also that the city does have plans. Uh, when I say plans, I'm talking about we have paid for plans to have that building renovated that could be available to someone if they would like to take a look at those as well with that. Mm -hmm. That's something that we could either sell to them or whatever may happen at that point. We plan to sell for $300,000. We spent quite a bit of money on those plans. That's <laughs> the right. The school is free, but the plans. As long as the, the plans, plans have any. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that could be available on it. Could be bought up to date. I believe. Anyone else? Other business? <laughs> no? Okay, would you mind reading the rest of that, please? City offices closed and so forth. City offices will be closed on Monday, September the 1st for Labor Day. Uh, there will be a joint government meeting Monday, September the 29th at 6.30 here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the new call, Crime Watch National Night Out Against Crime will be Tuesday, August the 5th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you. I want to ask you a few young ladies right there if they have anything to say about National Night Out. Put you right on the spot. Do you have anything to say about the Crime Watch meetings that you've been at? Or National Night Out. National Did you Night Out. Say anything about? This is where inviting everybody to Good to hear. Anyone out in the audience at all? Anything else tonight? Staff, anything at all? Council? Executive session, there's none tonight. And Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'm moving. We are adjourned.